Hello everyone, how are you doing today? Um, back today with another video and this video is going to be a little bit different from the some of the other videos that I've been making. In this video I have a pretty much a really dusty, really leftover PlayStation 4. This one I can't even play on the situation that it is. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open it up and we're going to take a look inside and see what is going on inside. Because the looks from outside is not it's not giving me a good vibe is what's going to be inside so i'm going to do a quick run through it and open it up quickly this tutorial is not based on how you open it up i'm just going to open it up and to do a restore and see if we can restore this playstation 4. so first thing i'm going to be quick at this we're going to remove the top cover by putting your fingers right at the front end of it there's a ps4 logo right in front so you just want to scoop it upward scoop this side and that side both side and scoop the sides and bring it back towards the back end lift it up all right now before we work i'm gonna put some i see a whoa this shield is broken that has a broken rusty shield this shows you a heat separate sprayed it right here I don't know how it's broken, maybe they open it up. I can see that they bend it too much and it's cracked right here. So if they try to open it and they close it down and they just left this one here, you don't actually need it. Broken. We're gonna grab some working towels uh, and we're gonna grab like a, two sheets of this one. We're gonna put underneath. So you wanna keep your workspace as clean as possible. I'm gonna leave the stuff that I removed to one side. You probably want to put some gloves if you want to. So the, up here you have the fan. It is really dirty. It looks horrible. And I can see all the dust accumulated on the sides. We're gonna remove these two screws and these two screws right here. And we are gonna use an iFixit tool set, screwdriver set. These are, they have a torque screw with a secure lock and a pen in the middle. So we're gonna use a torque number nine with a secure lock, I believe, yeah. So let's use that one. Also, we're gonna use a Phillips number one. And let's go ahead and remove these two on the top. And the part that is broken from the shield. On this end, Again, the broken part from the shield. Remove the, this one should be a short one. All right, before we do this one, let's flip it over and remove the bottom cover. Because there are two screws that hold it. And let's take advantage of this bottom cover that is missing. Remove the hard drive with a Phillips number one or zero. Slide down the hard drive. Now the back cover, there should be a screw and a warranty sticker. So grab a tweezers and remove the warranty sticker up here in the middle. And remove the screw with a secure lock in the middle. Again, it's the same torque, number nine. Now we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna scoop it in from the back end, from the side back in the corner. So I got this side out. Now we're gonna work our way through to the corner this end by the hard drive. It's kinda hard. There we go. And we're gonna work in the middle. The tiny clips here, we're gonna remove these clips. The same way that we removed it, but this time it's from the back towards the front. Lift it up, wiggle it around and you should be able to release it all right this one looks like a water spot right here big huge dust pile water spot right over here so definitely we have a water situation spillage right here so that's the bottom part here now first we're going to start removing all the cables here just slide them out pull the ribbon 
except the one with the lock on it. So this one, you want to lift up the lock 90 degrees and pull it out. The rest can slide out. The Wi-Fi cables, pop them upwards. The fan cable, just pull the cable back. Just work it around, it should come out. Now, first we're gonna put the Phillips number zero, and we're gonna start removing all the Phillips screws. And they're all the same size. The all the Phillips screws, they have the same size. Go ahead and remove all of them. And leave the torque screws for the next pass. Alright, now that we remove all the Phillips, we're gonna switch back to torque number nine with a secure lock. And we're gonna remove all the torque screws. I missed one screw right over there. All right, once we remove all the screws, we're gonna grab the top shield on one side from the front end, I believe, yes. And we're gonna lift it over. And uh, there's uh, some kind of hinges. You have to just let them go loose. And this is the bottom shield. Obviously, look at this oxidization right here. The water marks right over there. You can brush them, clean these ones up. And down here, oh my God. There we go. Now we can see some oxidization on the capacitors right here. On this voltage regulator, I believe there's uh, some oxidization right over here. We're gonna clean these ones up. Now all these pads, we're gonna remove the pads from here, from the memory RAM, VRAMs. We can use these these ones again. These are point uh, four millimeters. Right, remove the bracket for the CPU heatsink. Remove this shield. You wanna lift it up straight. Now for the motherboard part, before we remove the motherboard, we're gonna flip it back to other end and we're gonna remove the power unit. Just lift it up on the side and there's a two contact here, it's a little bit harder. And you have to lift it up evenly. Bring it up, so remove this contact from there and pull up the jack. This jack right here. And obviously we have to clean up all this power unit. With a compressed air, we're gonna clean up this power unit. What else we have down here? Now we gotta reach to the heat sink and remove the fan to be able to see it. So clear it back the other way around and the motherboard is pretty much falling off. So lift it up. And there is the surprise. Look at even the battery has a water damage on the battery. All these capacitors, all these power regulators over here. Lots of lots of oxidization way here. It is kind of almost to a point that I think it will not revive. All right, so let's put the motherboard to one side. We want to reach to the other end. We're going to remove this bracket to removing four tiny screws. This bracket is an stabilizer for the CPU, so there's not much underneath, it's not too much oxidization, but we're still going to clean it up. You're going to remove the tiny screws right here. There are two of them. There should be three somewhere. I don't see three. Two of them only. And we're going to lift up this bottom side. Just bring it up. And there is the fan. Look at that fan right over there. Terrifying. Oh my god. What is this? Holy shit, there's a more one. Wow, it's just like a toasted in there. Cleaning in here is gonna be it's it's kinda embedded right into it. Oh my god. Look at this, just a kinda crust coming up. Holy. No, this is horrible. I think this is the worst one I ever seen. I seen dusty, but not like a water and crust. Everything at the same time.
All right, I'm just gonna find a way with a metal brush, but not even a toothbrush can save this heat sink. So we're gonna use a metal brush. We're gonna soak it in the water and clean it up nicely. So we're gonna put that to one side too. Uh, the DVD drive, we're not gonna open it up because it's enclosed inside the box right there. So there's no reason to open the DVD drive. We're just gonna clean it up from outside. We're gonna remove two screws for the fan shield right here. So let's remove this one up too. Look all this crust and dust here. The fan will need to uh, maintain it. We're still gonna clean it up in an alcohol with a toothbrush and uh, whatever brush you can find. And we're gonna clean up the whole case, everything. So I'm gonna take it outside. I'm gonna use a toothbrush. I'm gonna use whatever I can get my hands on to clean up everything. And I'm gonna come back and we're gonna start cleaning up the motherboard after. I cleaned up the fan as much as I could because it's really hard, but I, it's really nice. Uh, decoloration on here, but it's um, again, it's cleaned. Uh, but I can't get in between them really hard, but this is the best I can do. Um, for the heat sink, we washed it up with an acid and clean up the whole heat sink. Decoloration right here, we remove all the oxidization right on the plate. Uh, clean up the vent system inside. Now you can see actually through the fence and it's ready to put it back on. So now we're gonna go to the motherboard. Based on the motherboard, first thing first, we're gonna remove the BIOS battery. So let's go ahead and remove the battery. This battery must be replaced. So we're gonna get a replacement battery. These are CR2032. So get a new CR2032 and we're gonna start cleaning up the board with a toothbrush and you can apply some isopropolic alcohol to clean it nicely. Clean up all those oxidization on the components. So any rust that is in there, we're gonna clean it up nicely. And we're gonna grab a little work towel and place it on top. So it's gonna absorb all the dirt to get in between the components. You can take your time cleaning it nicely. I'm just doing it quickly. For this decoloration on the plate on the copper, you can get a copper or silver cleaning solution. And uh, you can start cleaning those up, but it's not necessary. But if you want to do a real good job and take your time, grab a solution and start rubbing off in here. And you should be able to be able to clean it. It might take you a few hours, but if you take your time, you see how it's getting cleaned up nicely in here. So it's all about work and dedication and obviously i'm not just gonna i'm doing this for you guys to see it right now a little bit but if you want to do a real good job you can do this the whole way around also you can do a, another if you don't have copper cleaner you can try a baking soda with an alcohol so you can place baking soda on top uh, put some alcohol and then just rub it off this will clean it a little bit faster, but you still have to rub it off and clean it up. And you can see the results. It's, it's still nice and soft and smooth right here. It's still a better results you get, but you need more work to do with this. But this the copper cleaning here around it is not necessary. This is just grounding for the case. So it's not necessary, it's, just, it's still gonna go bad after a while because of the humidity and corrosion. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna clean up the dye, so apply alcohol. And clean up the CPU. You don't need to clean up in between the capacitors. 
But if you want to clean between the capacitors, you can grab a toothbrush and with an alcohol, you can just go ahead and clean it nicely. So you remove all the thermal paste in between the capacitors. There we go. Now, what we're going to do, uh, right over here that we had the oxidization, we're going to place an alcohol and we're going to clean it up. Go in a circle motion. The capacitor over here. And that's it, I'm guessing. So, yeah, now that we clean up all this, what we need to do, put the new battery in. This one goes face down. Next thing is to grab the case. First, we need to get the fan. Bring the fan and place it right on top. Put the two screws for the fan. Grab the bottom, play the heat sink. Bring it over. Make sure all this cable stays on top. Now we're gonna clean up the heat sink side, the cold plate or the hot plate nicely. What we're gonna do right now is put the thermal pads in here. Once we have the thermal pads located right on the power regulator, we're going to grab the bottom bracket, bring it over. I believe it was just this way, not that way. Okay, align it and put the four screws for this supporting bracket right here. Remember there's two screws for the bottom case right here. So right over here. And the second one is right over here. What we're going to do right now, we're going to put the thermal paste on this side of the... Hopefully I don't drop all these pads here, but they're going to fall off. Put the thermal paste on the CPU or GPU. Bring it over. Place it in there, bring it down, move the cables out of the way. Okay, once the cables are out of the way, put the pads on the VRAMs. Grab the top cover. Bring it over. Align it. And place it right there. Before we do this, we got to put the bracket for the CPU, so grab the sh protective shield for the capacitors, place it right in there, grab this, bend it a little bit backward so you get more tension, put halfway, just a uh, screw, just screw it down a little bit, and you screw the other end. All right, once we got this one in place, now we can go ahead and place the shield on top. Once the shield is in place, go ahead and place the Wi-Fi cables right here. This one over right here. All right, now we're gonna start with the small uh, screws right here. This is small screws, they only have to contact metal to metal. And the big ones has to go to a, where the way you see a plastic at the bottom. So go ahead, put the small screws. All right, now that we're done with the Phillips square screws, we're gonna start with the, uh, Torque screws. We're gonna grab it on the corner. They're mostly on the outer side. So grab the screws for the torque. Uh, before we continue with the torque screws, go ahead and grab the ribbon cables and plug them in.
just slide them down there under the jack Lift up the lock, put the jack underneath, the flex cable underneath and lock it down. And make sure you plug in the fan cable all the way to this end. And put the cables in the corner. Now we're going to flip it over and we're going to put the power unit in here. So grab your power unit. Plug in the 12 volt cable first, so bring it in this position. It goes in one way only, so align it over and then just push it towards the board right there. And the reason I didn't put the screws there because one of the screws grabs it from here, from the other end, so that's why we need to put the power unit first. Put the power unit and bring it over straight down. And make sure it goes in place all right once it's in place go ahead once for all put this long screws on this end to hold it in place put the short screws beside them now we can go ahead and flip it back to other end Uh, we're going to continue with the uh, torque screws to push them back in. All right, once we're done down here, we're going to grab the hard drive. We can test the hard drive for to see if we have a bad sector or if we don't have a bad sector. So I'm going to plug it in with a... A USB to SATA adapter to my computer and we're gonna use a hard drive program to double check the hard drive bad sectors or no so we know that we are good to go the hard drive is fine it's 100% there's no bad sectors and we're gonna grab the drive we're gonna slide it right in there push it all the way in put the screws with the Phillips all right, we're gonna grab the bottom cover first. I clean as much as I can. The coloration in here is not removable. So we're gonna bring it from the front end of the this one here, and we're gonna push it towards the back, and we're gonna push it back down to the board. And we're gonna put the tiny screw at the back middle. All right. Now I'm going to remove all this. Now we're going to grab the top cover. For the top cover, you're going to bring it from the back end down. Slide the back side down first. And slide it towards the front and squeeze it down. All right, now we're going to try to see if it powers on and if we do get a screen. So we're going to first power it on. The power cable is right there. The HDMI cable. I'm going to grab my portable screen. And we're going to turn it on. And there we get the screen right now. It's actually doing an checking the hard drive. Once we remove the hard drive, it just double checks the hard drive, makes sure the hard drive is working. So it says, do not turn off your PlayStation. And we're just going to let this one configure and we should be done. Again, thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you guys in my next video.